welcome to New Day hey. Christian Center. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's uh, bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ to ask you to bless this reading of your word. Yes. And bless us as we seek to renew our minds with your word. Continually yes. renew our minds. Yes. In Jesus' mighty Jesus. name. Amen. 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 Have a seat, please. I've been going over uh, authority and dominion and going over some of the commands of Jesus Christ because in order to give commands, we have to be able to take commands. We spoke about yes. the chain of authority that we're to operate in for it to operate effectively. Um, I went over four commands. Let me turn back here in the notes. To repent. Number one, to not let not your heart be troubled. Number two, no fear. Number three, follow me. Number four, rejoice. We're on number five, which is to let your light shine. And uh, Sister Darlene just touched on this in Psalm 119, 105, about the Lord's word is a lamp unto our feet. His light is a lamp unto our feet. If you turn to Matthew... 516, please. Can say amen when you get there. Amen. Matthew 516 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It'll make a little bit more sense if you start at 514. I'll read there. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And uh, light in the Greek, or actually shine in the Greek is lampo, to give light. And it's an active verb. It means continuously giving light, right? Not like taking a picture and just brief flashes of light here and there, but continuously giving light. This way you continuously give glory to God. Amen. Okay, well, what, what light are we talking about? The light of God. Amen. The light spoken over and created by God. Amen. Everybody turn please to Genesis 1 3. That's all the way in front of the Bible. <laughs> Everybody say amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. All right. And God said, Let there be light. There was light. This is one of the uh, first creations God spoke over the world is for there to be light. Yes. It's a removal and a separation of darkness. Darkness does not overcome the light. The light that God created overcame the darkness. Yes. So, as we know in the word, light in the Bible is God. And goodness, darkness in the Bible is the devil and evil. Yes. Light signifies God's presence and favor. So the light in you needs to shine forth on others. And that brings God's presence and favor to bear right then and there. Amen. Amen. See, um, Say that again, Pastor. If you, the, you let the light of God in you shine forth. Yes. Onto others, that brings the presence of God to bear. Right there in that time and in that space. A manifestation. Amen. A manifestation. Yes, amen. If, let's see. Turn to, please, Matthew 25. We'll start at verse 36. Matthew 25. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
This is Jesus speaking. I'm start at 36. I'll read through 40. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes, clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Amen. Jesus is telling us there, you pray for the favor of God upon a situation. First off, you should be expected to be used as the tool, the vessel, or the soldier to bring forth that favor in that situation. That's, amen. To feed that person that's hungry, to clothe that person that's naked, to protect that person that's weak or vulnerable, exposed or fearful. Amen. You bring to bear the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, we know some brothers and sisters here that have had a personal visitation, Pastor Darlene and Pastor T.C., with Jesus Christ. I've never had a, a visitation to the point where I could say, and Jesus stood right next to me, or Jesus came into my bedroom. But I can say that Jesus has used me in many situations to bring forth his glory. Right. So that people were marking, not comprehend what's taking place. Why would you do that? Or why would you say that? Why would you extend your neck for that? Or thank you for doing that. Thank you for extending your neck for that. Thank you for bringing that forth. And then that's glory to Jesus. Amen. Especially those who knew you before you came to Christ. Mm -hmm. Or especially those who knew you as a babe in Christ and now see maturity in you. Yes. Yeah. We had a, a neighbor across the street from us. She started screaming. This was a couple of nights ago. And uh, I'm downstairs got myself planted in a chair, feeling a little gimpy, and it feels great on my back. And I hear this scream, and I go outside. I'm standing on the porch, and I'm listening, and I don't see anybody out there. I think maybe some weird girl just ran down the street screaming. Well, another guy's standing outside. He's looking up into a balcony across the street from us, and he's asking somebody standing there, why is she screaming? Well, I'm looking, I don't see anybody standing up there, so I look over at this guy, I said, do you know where that's coming from? Well, it's dark. You can't see me. He starts walking over to me. And I can argue, he reeks of booze. I'm like, all right, well, this isn't good. I wish I just kind of kept my mouth shut. <laughs> all right. And uh, yes. so he starts talking. Yeah, I heard this lady screaming. And I saw her, you know, I wonder what's going on. And starts talking about he's going to have to kick somebody's butt or something stupid like that. He doesn't have a shirt on. He reeks of booze. He's covered in tattoos. He's kind of yoked out. And he's... Jack in his jaw. I'm about ready to go inside because I don't hear anything else. I didn't see what he saw. And then the door opens across the street. And here comes this woman, this damsel in distress. <laughs> she comes bouncing across the street. First off, I know Teresa's upstairs. She's looking out. She's seeing this. So I don't want any part of this woman running across the street. <laughs> go back. Go back. You need to go away. And she starts talking about how distressed she is. I said, all right. I'll call the squad to come out here to stand here. She says, oh, no, don't do that. And then the hero over here says, no, we don't need any of that BS with the police out here. I said, okay. I walked inside and I just shut the door. Didn't say goodbye. Didn't say, well, I hope you're okay. I just shut the door. I'm braiding out of my cop mind. I knew several things. I didn't need to engage this guy because I didn't want to fight him. I didn't need to engage this woman because she didn't want to come put hands on me telling me to come help her. And she had to pretend to piss. I shut the door. Boom. I thought, good for y'all. Revel in whatever you got going on out there. Right? That's what I'm got saving me. the arms of Jesus I and am. Teresa. And then I felt conviction in my spirit. Okay. Way well, cop mind work to kept you out of physical trouble. And yes, that lady is acting and operating like a moron, and so is he. But do they still need help? Yes. That woman clearly needs help. That man clearly needs help. Yes. He's operating in drunkenness. She's operating like a fool and like a Jezebel running out there to two dudes with no shirts on in the middle of the street. Her husband's in there on a drunken rant and a rave. Thank you, Jesus, that he didn't come outside. 
one all of a sudden come save her virtue, what, what there was left of it. Right. That was a bad mix. Yes, sir. How can I help? I can step outside of my former police mind, and I can step into the spirit, and I can raise my hands out there, and I can pray peace. Amen. Amen. And I did. Yeah. Now, I know when calls for service go out in my neighborhood, I get to see them, or I can research them. There was no calls for service out there that night. Now, look, this is a small example, kind of an entertaining example. Uh, but how do you bring Jesus Christ to bear in that situation? I'm not going to start casting pearls before swine in front of this drunk man and in front of this Jezebel woman. Right. I'm, that is not the way to go and do it. God's not calling me to do that. Listen to this, church. Okay, he, and he didn't. My mind said, no. And my spirit also said, no, 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 no. Not doing this. Boom. Shut the door. I'm going to separate myself from that. But I can't from inside of my house raise my hands up. And those walls don't mean anything to the kingdom. That's right. Their drunkenness, her lasciviousness, all of those things don't confront the kingdom of God. So to be used as a vessel, speaking the word of God out, just as the Lord spoke, said, let there be light, and light was. Amen. His word never returning void. His word, a lamp even unto our feet, Pastor Darlene read. So then, what is taking place when I'm speaking the word? There's light coming forth, whether they see it or not. The kingdom of darkness has to bow itself to it and respond. Right. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And it did. And it did. And it will. And it does. Amen. So, to bring God's glory, presence, and favor to bear on any situation. Let's look at... Uh, and Pastor Tony, that sir. literally means any situation. Any. You're standing in your neighborhood with people drunk in the street from your living room, yes. exercised authority and dominion. Amen. Amen. And look, I'm feeling very vulnerable too. <laughs> I can't take, I can't step down off of my porch. I'm leaning up against the wall. And this guy's running his mouth and you can tell he's wanting to run at me because there's a, a slick top parked in front and he's obviously anti phobic so he's directing all that at me. Can't fight him. Right? Not the way to go either way, but can't. The power that I needed and that those the help that those people needed yes. is right there in his word. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians 4 6, please. Thank you, Jesus. Good Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. That's a lot of light. That's a lot of glory. That's a lot of knowledge. And all of that is released by the unction of the Spirit in the Word and does go out and does go forth. That's the presence of God when you speak the Word. He moves to fulfill it. All of us, when we pray, as Pastor Darlene was saying, I, I prayed and I didn't receive an answer. Well, an answer was forthcoming. Yes. Just as one was forthcoming for Daniel, though he didn't see it. Yes. He continued to operate in the expectancy of it. Yes. And that's what we should do, too. Amen. You know, anybody can look at that and say, dude, really going to raise your hand up and expect those two people to suddenly, uh, you know, translate from being morons to being peaceful? Yes. Absolutely. God did it for me. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. That's good teaching. Let's look at uh, the wisdom of God is foolishness to this world. Amen. Yes, it is. We just read that too. Yes. Uh, in the Amplified Bible, he calls it absurdity and stupidity. Yes. The wisdom of the world it's in the eyes of God. Through God to the point down strong. Yes. Let's look at uh, John 1 9. We can start at six. Please. We'll start at six. Amen. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. So the light that we're talking about is the true light. Yes, sir. The yeah. true light. 
speak the truth, the true light, the word of God, the word Jesus will manifest. Look through prayer, through supplication, through uh, prophecy, yes. Spoken through Sister Timothy. Yes. She had a duty upon her. Why? She's in the chain of command. Recognizes him. Yes, sir. So she was said, here's an order. I'm putting it out. I'm making it happen. I want you to announce it. This happens in the service. This happens, I, I don't care where you work. You got a boss come up to you and say, hey, Daryl, listen, I got something that's got to go out to all the guys. Uh, we've got a new, um, we got a new protocol for this. Or we got a new order coming out. I want you to hand it out to everybody. Okay, well, are you making the new protocol? No. But you got to hand that information out to the other man on the job site, right? Or else they don't get it. And then they're working in an absence of knowledge. And when that absence of knowledge, and they're working in an absence of the ability to receive those gifts, that your boss wanted them to have. That's good. So, Sister Timothy, then, under authority, recognizing it, God said, I'm doing the thing, I want you to announce it. So she announced it. Hallelujah. And I was able to receive it. Amen. This is how the kingdom works. Yes, sir. It's very simple in that regard, it's still very powerful. Amen, brother. Amen. So that's the light, the light of Jesus that you bring to bear that you need to let shine forth. That is command number five. Command number six, honor God's law. Honor God's law. Look at Matthew 5, 17. Thank you, Jesus. What great teaching folks. Praise God. Chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 17. We'll start there. This is Jesus speaking. We'll go through 19. Everybody say amen when you're there. Amen. Amen. Matthew 5, 17. This is Jesus speaking. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches the commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So, honor God's law. I know that there is, uh, at times, well, there's confusion about that. Well, so what, I can't wear a piece of cloth that's made out of two different pieces of cloth? Uh, you know, do I got to uh, uh, tend to my livestock, but only on a certain day? I can't pick up a, you know, a stick of wood or carry any bricks or, you know, things of this nature. <coughs> There's ceremonial law. Like in Leviticus, Leviticus 1, 2, and 3 speaks of burnt offerings, grain offerings, fellowship offerings. This is ceremony. All of these things point to Christ. Yes. There's a civil law. Let's see. Let's go to Deuteronomy 23, 24. Deuteronomy 23. Amen. If you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat all the grapes you want, but do not put any in your basket. If you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not put a sickle to their standing grain. That's a civil law. This, these are boundaries given to the people so that they understand and know how to act and how to conduct themselves in the presence of God's people. The civil laws that we have now come from Hebraic and Judaic law, 
but it's being applied and has been applied, at least in this nation, to everybody, whether they believe or agree with this word or not. And we're starting to see them slowly chop at the basis of this, right? Saying, well, I don't believe, so I don't have to abide. So lots of laws are starting to shift and change. That's good. Um, and there's the moral law. Let's go to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Exodus 20 is titled the Ten Commandments. Uh, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image. We go forward to 12, honor your father and your mother so you may live long in the land. Go to 2013, you shall not commit murder. Go to 14, you shall not commit adultery. These are all moral laws. Amen? So then with all of this taking place, with everything that you can go back to in Exodus and in Deuteronomy with regards to how to conduct yourself on the Sabbath and uh, your conduct in your neighbor's vineyard and in your neighbor's grain field and your conduct with regard to the commandments, a lot of confusion can be sown in if we're ignorant of this word or if we let the world tell us, well, my, your word is, is confused. Your word is in conflict. It certainly isn't in conflict. Jesus came to fulfill, yes? Yes. So if he fulfills, and he fulfills in clarity, he's not the author of confusion. Right. So then what what can we, what do we then grab hold on to with the word? What did Jesus say? Go to Matthew 22. Because God is not the author of confusion. He doesn't want us getting wrapped around the axle about anything. He wants us to understand clearly. That's why he wants us to have a clear mind, not a drunken mind. He wants us to have a sound mind and not a fearful mind. Yes. Amen. 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 Matthew 22, let's start at verse 36. 22, 36. say, Amen. When you Amen. I'm, I'm going a little fast here, so. Matthew 22, 36. And this is titled in, in my Bible, Religious Leaders Question Jesus About the Greatest Commandment. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And remember, he said he's come to fulfill the law. Right. Every jot, every tittle. Jesus right. replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, mm -hmm. with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. And what does that say in 40? Somebody read 40, verse 40. All the law and the prophets came on to these two commandments. Amen? Amen. Amen. All the law, all the prophets hang on to these two commandments. Yes. So that nobody can come in and get you all twisted up about, well, what are you doing out with your wife? Isn't it that time of the month? I mean, don't y'all believe in that? Oh, well. So that the church has clarity and not confusion. Understand that. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Yes. If you abide in these, the first one, the greatest one, and the second one that is like it, then you're walking in clarity. There's no confusion here. Amen. You're not having to worry about, well, how did they do it this way and how was it done that way? What does Jesus say in that regard? And then this will guide you by the Spirit into all the truth and the clarity that you need. It's not supposed to get you wrapped around the axle. It's not supposed to get any of us wrapped around the axle. That can be easily done. Understand what Jesus Christ said. And in that, you follow his commandments. And in that, you can have authority and dominion. And I'll speak about his other commandments after this. Amen. 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 Amen.